Well, duh, the best and fastest way to achieve success is to model someone that's already been successful in that area that you're trying to pursue. Hello again everyone, I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli where we educate, lead, and inspire. And you know, we here in the United States right now as I'm sitting here are looking at a massive spike in cases of this corona virus. The reason why I constantly, one of my, my buddies, a, a close friend of mine from Harvard who I listen to, and Eli, by the way, if you're going to name drop, always name drop somebody that went to a, an outstanding school. All right. Anyway, he and I are talking, and he said, you know, why are you, you know, you, you, you're very focused on this COVID-19. Well, you know what? If we don't get this COVID-19 solved, the rest of it is academic, right? If people aren't above ground, it doesn't matter if they know the success formula or, or not. Or if you're below ground, it's over. So the key thing, as far as I'm concerned, right here, right now, and I'm not somebody that particularly pays attention to the news on a normal basis. I block that out. I'm focused on my you know, individual goals, my individual burning desire, dream goals, ambitions, that type of thing. And I want to be selfish towards that end, singleness of purpose. But this has got to take your attention because it's affecting lives in large, large numbers and it's getting worse. So that's the reason why, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on this particular area. Now, my point is here, it's time to start modeling successful achievers. Now, we here in the United States, we could say, well, let's see, who's been successful so far at, at curtailing this virus almost all the way down to unbelievably low numbers, zero numbers? Well, let's see, we have um, South Korea, we have China, we have the European Union, we have New Zealand, right? But one of the things, you, you know, people in America might say is, well, you know, that's good, but those are, you know, foreign people and, you know, they don't think the same way that we think, you know. Well, how about Canada? Canada is about as close to United States in thinking in many areas as any country you're going to find. Now, Canada and the United States started off at ground zero with this virus at exactly the same time in exactly the same place. But what's happened? Well, over time the United States has gone up and then we had a sort of a plateau also known as Memorial Day where people went out and they went nuts and oh everything's back to normal and so on and so forth and then right now we are seeing the results of that because this is, you know, in the United States, one of the things is we're a right now, right, a right now, everything type of culture, right? You want to watch a TV show, you watch it all. You watch 20 episodes at once. You, you can't wait week to week. You don't have the patience. Sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes it isn't. In this case, it isn't. Because what happened is we're getting the slow chain reaction of what happened on Memorial Day we're starting to see those numbers and guess what we're going to start we will see exactly the same thing in another two three four weeks of the results of all of this all these people gathering closely together of people ignoring of people not wearing face masks all right so once again what's what did they do in Canada well first of all in Canada what they did was they made it very 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 clear what was needed. Okay, we did that in the United States. Then they started to use a word that I have not heard very much here in the United States. And that word is vigilant. Vigilant. You gotta keep on it. You gotta keep on it. And when you see videos of people in Canada, they're all wearing masks. All of them. And when you talk to these people on the street, when you, when you hear the interviews of people talking on the street, they're saying, hey, that's what the government has told us 
They've been very transparent and everybody has united together. So much so, in fact, that the two major political parties, the leader of, of, of the opposing party that's not in power right now, is complimenting the group of people that are in power. Gee, do we ever see that here in the United States? What are we doing instead? We are using a, a culture of division and I absolutely, for the life of me, cannot understand why. If our purpose is to get this, put the genie back in the bottle and get down to some numbers that are manageable, because right now it's out of control, the numbers are not manageable, and until they become manage manageable, you can't do any effective tracing, you can't do any effective quarantining, and you can't eliminate this virus, you can't as Barney Fife say, nip it in the bud, which is what we should be doing. But in Canada, that's exactly what they did. Instead of having this party and that party, they said, hey, we're all Canadians, we're going to work together because this is something that has absolutely nothing to do with politics. Nothing. So it's not a scarlet letter, <coughs> excuse me, it's not a scarlet letter to wear a mask and all of the leaders are leading by example. Now, in a typical scenario where you have different factions and different opinions, I can understand that type of political rhetoric going out there as a strategy. But we're talking about sickness. We're talking about life and death. We're not talking about a tax cut, all right? We're not talking about adding a school over there. We're not talking about stuff that, you know, is, is unimportant. What we're talking about are, is health issues to people in the United States. And we can't just say, hey, buddy, it is what it is. You got to live with it. That's what they seem to be saying right now. Now, the only possible explanation that my very humble self can see as to why we're taking, not, and I'm speaking of the, the federal government, why the federal government is taking that approach is because they are more focused on being reelected than they are on solving this darn issue. Please, please, if I'm dead, I can't vote for you. Does that make sense? And if I'm sick, I can't go to work and help the economy. Let's get our priorities straight. Let's get people healthy. Let's be vigilant and do the basics that are necessary. All of these other countries did it. Now you might say, you know, in South Korea or, or the European Union or whatever, you know, the government is, is different and they can in China they can they can impose more things you know it once they, they give you a directive that's it there's no discussion that's the end boom but you can't say that about Canada you can't say that about Canada Canada is just like the United States except it's a few degrees colder but the point is these people buckled down they were patient they didn't rush to open things up before the guidelines of safety were observed. We here in the United States, before there was, was there even any state, maybe with the exception of New York, that waited the 14 days before they started to reopen? And once again, New York itself would be a very good group to model because they did things slowly, they did things carefully, they had the restrictions, they weren't rushed, they said, you know what? We're going to take our time, we're going to do it right, we're going to keep things under control, we're, our numbers are going to go down, and then once they go down, then I'm going to be ready to rock and roll. That's the point. So, can we smarten up a little bit? Can we take a look at our neighbors to the north? Can we be vigilant and get this thing more manageable so that we are going to be able to continue on? Hopefully there'll be a vaccine, hopefully there'll be some new medications you know we're already hearing about that there are but the point is you can't count on the unknown prepare 
you know, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Right now, all we're doing is hoping for the best. Hope is not a strategy. Vigilance, following the basics, is a strategy. And because we will never end a rant on a philosophical note, let's be vigilant, get out there, and charge! I'm Eli's dad.